What is up my people and welcome back to Technological Journey episode 8. In the last episode we buffed our E2 autocrafting, we got EV refined circuits and we made titanium. In today's episode we're using that titanium to go to the moon. So as a quick catch up in between episodes, I used this dark steel anvil to combine a dark steel pickaxe and then powered upgrade and a travel upgrade to give us a tool which will give us some short range teleportation. Now some of the recipes for this required a soul binder which was easy enough to get. I also got rid of our backpack and made a handy bag which as you can see expands our inventory massively allowing us to stack items in up to 128 stacks. So now we can start to work on our rocket. So the first thing that I did was I repurposed our HV chemical reactor from our titanium line and just stuck it on the end of our MV line. This is because we just need to batch up a small amount of rocket fuel and then we can move it back after. Now rocket fuel can get quite confusing to craft as it uses a bunch of different fluids and they all have different names. So starting from the top backwards we have rocket fuel and to get that we need oxygen and 1,1 dimethyl hydrazine. To make our dimethyl hydrazine we need chloramine and dimethylamine. The chloramine is made with ammonia and hypochlorous acid ammonia being made with nitrogen and hydrogen and hydrochloric acid being made with chlorine and water. The dimethylamine on the other hand is made with ammonia and methanol. Ammonia again nitrogen and hydrogen and the methanol is made with hydrogen, carbon dust and oxygen. Now all of those recipes are made in a chemical reactor except the rocket fuel which is made in a mixer. With our rocket fuel made I went ahead and I just moved our HV chemical reactor back into the titanium setup so we can continue producing titanium which we're going to use later on in this episode. And now if we take a quick look at the quest book, you can see we've completed the titanium section, we've completed the rocket fuel section, now we just need to take a quick look at these quests over here on the right. So the first quest that we need to complete is 9 launch pads, so that's just some dye and some light concrete. That's made with concrete dust which we just get through pulverising the normal concrete which we use to build the base. And the second quest here is just requesting for us to make a spacesuit, which is key so that we don't instantly die of suffocation when we reach the moon. Those are some relatively simple recipes, not requiring too much other than some stainless steel, some lenses and a couple of leather pieces of armour. The final quest wants us to get a gas charge pad, which is just the method that we use to charge our spacesuit with oxygen. Again, a simple recipe using no more than an HV pump, bronze drum and stainless steel plates. So now we have the spacesuit, we have the means to survive in space. We can upgrade that to the airtight seal enchantments later on, which will allow us to wear our normal armour in space, but for now we're going to skip that. So now we just need two more things. We need a way to get to space, and we need to get back. For that, we're going to look at the rocket assembling machine quest. And that asks us to get four things. The rocket assembling machine, the fueling station, the linker, and the hollow projector. None of those take anything more really than some HV components. So I went ahead and I crafted those four items up alongside an extra batch of stainless steel which I just put in the EBF. And talking of the EBF, we also needed to use it to make chrome. This is because we needed chrome rods for the HV level emitter which we used. So using those bits and pieces, I went ahead and assembled the rocket launch pad. I also built the rocket on top using a couple of bits and pieces outlined in the next quest. Now this next quest also asks that you make a planet ID chip which essentially allows you to set your destination to the moon because we don't want to travel to any of the other planets in this pack which there are quite a few of. This required us to make a lime green lens using ender eyes and then use that lens to engrave some chips to make some advanced rocketry circuits. Okay so now we've got a spacesuit and we built the rocket we are ready to go to space. As soon as we give this thing behind us power, we can assemble the rocket and zoom off to the moon. But before we do that, I'm just going to have a quick moan about how I just spent an hour editing some footage trying to get dislocators to teleport us to the moon and back from the moon, just to realise that the EV chemical reactor we need to go to the end is a lot more difficult to get than I thought, so we're going to set that up later. But that's nothing to worry about really, because I didn't do much. The only thing I made was this single EV machine casing here. So I didn't do too much, that just took 8 of our titanium, so if you're wondering where that's gone in the system, that's where it'll be. Anyway, let's power this thing up and go to space. So now if we press scan on the rocket, it will scan it and build the rocket here. And then we press build. And now we have a rocket that we can use. And you can see this little line here. I'm not sure how well it shows on video, but you can see this little line. That just shows that the fueling station is linked to the rocket. So if we get our rocket fuel and we just pipe it into the fueling station, then the rocket will start to fuel itself. And I do believe that this now means that we're ready to go to space. But first, we have to just set our planet ID chip up here in the guidance computer. 
mount a pressure tank onto our spacesuit in the suit workstation and fill up our spacesuit with oxygen on the gas charge pad and we're now ready to take off. And we have landed. So now if we jump off our rocket, we should be able to breathe because of our spacesuit. Yep, lovely. So I've made a little waypoint for our rocket there so we don't get lost. And that oxygen bar just above our hunger bar shows how long we can breathe for. Now if we whip out our prospector and we go ahead and look here, we can see what ores we've got on the moon. So we've got rutile, we've got bauxite, aluminium, columbite, galite and pyrochlor. But the one that we want here is rutile. So if I just run over to get some rutile. So this chunk here should have a decent amount right below us here. Now, just for the sake of it, for the first thing, I'm just going to mine by hand and see what we can pick up with our hammer. Now, I did forget to bring some torches, which isn't ideal, but oh well. And here we go. So we've hit a rutile ore vein. So now let's just pick up a bunch of this. Oh, and it also looks like we've got dilithium, which is another useful thing. I'm not sure what it's useful in this pack, but I would assume it's for deuterium, which was very useful in non factory. But that's enough hand mining for now, let's go set up our chunk miner. So I took a trip back to the overworld to grab the bits and pieces that we need to set up our chunk miner. And here we go, we should now be mining Rutile on the moon. Now we can set this up with an ender chest to transport it back to our base later so we don't have to carry this crate. But for now we're not going to need an awful lot amount, so awfully large amount, so we're just going to mine it by hand and carry the crate back with us. There we go. Select the destination for the earth again. And off we go. So I just processed that rutile ore through our steam oven and then through our steam crusher. And with the rutile dust in the system, our titanium line is now back and working so we can get much more titanium for the future. But on that note, uh, I think I'm going to call the episode here. Now, I know that this has been an extremely short episode, especially in comparison to last episode's 40 minutes, but I feel like it doesn't really make sense to do much more in this episode because I did want the moon trip to be an entire focused episode and that was just bad planning on my part, to be honest, because I thought that there'll be a lot more content to cover than we actually did in this episode. We were planning on making an end portal and going to the end to get dislocated and all of that, but I decided not to do that until later, as I explained earlier. But there's nothing to worry about. Next episode, we're going to be back to between 20 to 40 minute episodes, I think. That's probably the sweet spot. If you want to see shorter or longer episodes, just let me know in the comments, but I do apologise for having such a short episode come out. But still, same thing applies. If you did enjoy it, I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video. It helps a lot. And if you're enjoying the series, please subscribe. And I also appreciate any comments, as usual, that you might have. So, sorry for the short episode once again, but thank you for watching. Uh, it's been me, Iron Copter.